as Birchwood Village celebrated its 100 years. I've lived in the village for 55 years. Neighbors gathering at City Hall seemed to share just as many stories. And there was a man hanging from a tree, and it turned out that that was Babyface Nelson. With help from the White Bear Lake Area Historical Society, the program gave an insight into life in the village over the last century. Bill Trinka, who's lived in Birchwood since 1977, grew up vacationing here as a boy. His great aunt, the first female mayor. It was a big treat for me uh, to come out and spend a weekend with Aunt Lou's. And they'd let me sleep on the back porch and be I uh, have all the windows open and I could hear the big water tower that, that was right next door from us would overflow during the rain. It was just fun. I look forward to that every summer. Mayor Mary Wingfield, who was born and raised here, never felt the need to live elsewhere, fondly detailing her childhood memories as if they happened yesterday. Yeah, he gave away Cracker Jack on Halloween. There wasn't a kid in his town that didn't go over to Alfie's to get Cracker Jack on Halloween, and I'm a mile away from his house. Alfred Bloomquist, affectionately referred to as Alfie, was the police officer and bus driver of the village and holds a special place in the hearts of residents. His story, like others, is being handed down as the city experiences change. I'm as far as you can get, and it's like, Mom, I'm sorry, I gotta go. Off to get our, our Cracker Jack. So, that's important. I mean, you know, the new people don't understand that, I mean, they, they wouldn't know why it's Bloomquist Park, but once you tell them, then they're gonna adopt it, then they're gonna take ownership of the city, and they're gonna bring us forward the next 100 years. This is just the beginning. With less than 1,000 people covering 214 acres of land, the village began as a summer getaway, though the modest cottages have been replaced by larger year-round homes. And, and when I came here after living in East St. Paul for a few months, I thought I was in heaven. But those homes don't seem to have overshadowed the neighborly feel villagers say they experience every day. Yeah, I go out to get the newspaper in the morning and everybody says hi. They're walking their dogs and they wave and holler and, you know, it's 7 o'clock in the morning and everybody's just very cheery. 88-year-old Jim Rupert lives across the street from Mayor Wingfield. She's just a wonderful neighbor to have. So. Living anywhere else doesn't hold much interest and he doesn't plan to, he says, at this point in his life. It's, uh, I don't have too many more uh, years to put on the, on the, the blackboard, but uh, <laughs> oh. I'm looking forward to what time I do have left, so. I hope to spend the rest of my life out here, for sure. I have done some traveling with my uh, son and grandkids and that kind of stuff, but it always feels good to come home. Mayor Wingfield, who paused for a moment of silence to honor victims of 9-11, went full throttle in the hours, even moments, before the celebration began intercepting a 100-pound package from the UPS driver, rolling it through the woods. Goes, oh, okay, who are you? I said, well, I'm the mayor. Said, okay, you can have it. A so, fitting anecdote for a community that seems to take pride in being unique. We're different, you know? And it's not because we're special, it's just because we make the effort. And I, we got so many people here who did that today, which is great.